Hi YouTube, Matt from Adventure Sport Flashlights and today I just wanted to make a quick video about how to measure current in your flashlight. Um, this light here is a mag light that's converted to an XML2 emitter and it has a linear regulator inside of it which means that the current we measure at the tail cap is going to be the same that the emitter sees. Now that's not true on a a uh, buck driver or a boost, but we're not going to get into the math for that today. We're just going to concentrate on how to get an accurate read on what you're truly getting. Um, with the linear regulator, the emitter runs directly off the batteries, and when a lot of times people, when they're new or they just are not familiar with this part of the hobby, they run out and they buy a cheap multimeter from Walmart or wherever and they come home and they try to measure the current and they're not getting the output they expected that they know their emitter can handle and I'm going to show you one of the reasons why there's several but this is one that uh, I think a lot of people stumble on uh, now we have my uh, leads plugged in appropriately current set to 10 amps got our batteries in there and this make sure the switch is on and what we'll do is we'll make our connection between the battery and this edge. We'll ground it right there and see what uh, current is running through the light to the emitter. Okay, as you can see, we're getting about 3.3 .3 amps there. It's not bad, but really that's not entirely an accurate read and here's the reason why a lot of times you'll get even lower than that when you know you should be getting more and that's because you know at the end of this you've got these little bitty tiny pinpoints and no matter how big your wires inside here are it doesn't matter this creates a bottleneck like having a four inch pipe run into a quarter inch pipe you know it's going to slow you down and these leads, there's no, t these look thick, but that's mostly insulation. Plus, there's resistance inside the meter. So, what I tell people to do is, I went and got some really thick wire. I don't even know what gauge this is. It just happened to fit real close in there, and I soldered the end to make it make a good, solid contact. This is like something you'd find in your car, okay? It's heavy. And this, plugging this in instead of these cheap factory leads, makes a lot bigger contact area for right here and these thick heavier wires eliminate the resistance you're getting in this. Now there will still be some internal resistance in this meter but uh, as you can see in just a second it does make somewhat of a difference in how much current you're getting See, so we're getting almost a full amp more. We're getting 4.118 now, and we were getting, you know, 3-something earlier. That's realistically with this, you know, the tail cap, especially if you have a piece of wire there for to lower the resistance, that's more realistically what you're going to be getting at the meter, or at the emitter. Now, if you have a $300 fluke multimeter, you may not need to do this. Uh, maybe Fluke compensates for the leads somehow. I don't know. This has just been my experience with the cheaper multimeters. And so I, I know I've had other people talk to me and ask, you know, why, what's going on with this. And so I thought I'd just uh, point that out. And I hope that, you, hope that it helps you. Um, good lucks on all your projects. Happy modding.